Presentation of Main Street Media, your source for news, sports, and information on Main Street in Middle Tennessee. Welcome in, everybody. Happy Friday. Going to bring in Justin Kulik. Thank you for that open. I get kind of fascinated with it every yeah. time because I go, look at all the little animals. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I, I wish I could have uh, incorporated more of uh, you with your farm animals because those are my favorite, which I will down the road. You will see those. I will be sending you some more footage of them. It's kind of hard sometimes if I'm out working with them to actually hold out and 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 get some footage, but and it's too muddy for 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 me to invite you over because right. oh, we're all struggling with mud. I really love this picture that I found. Um, Adele Borchetta. She posted something, and I thought it was so hilarious. People say, "Oh, can I come see your animals?" Right. Okay, the reality of farm chores <laughs> in the rain. And this ain't no lie. She and I both were talking about it. It just, it, it happens. Mud happens on a farm, especially when there are flash floods and right. You know, I bet I, it gets crazy. Like, uh, you know, the ground must be so saturated. Oh, it's crazy. And when we have snow, it is absolutely the right. As, <laughs> Elizabeth, I'll come out and be your camera girl sometime. Okay. That's a deal. When it's pretty weather, we'll do that. Right. We'll Dry definitely day, right? do that. Yeah. Hello to Ruth. Hello to Steve. And of course, Elizabeth, you guys are like a support group for me when we have our show every day. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, if you are watching the show, we hope that you will share. First of all, invite people to be a part of what we're doing. We're going to do some things in the coming weeks uh, with some private groups that we can have to talk about things coming on. Today, we're going to have a new feature called an unboxing. People have started sending me things and saying, hey, I've got this new product. Will you talk about it? Well, yes, we're going to be able to do that. And so um, I asked for my special official unboxing knife. It looks so dangerous, doesn't it? It does. It does. That thing looks deadly. I know. Farmhand Joe said... You need one of these for those unboxing things, you know. <laughs> I used one of those at uh, at Al's Foodland. I used to work yeah. over there. And, uh, yeah, they gave me one. Like, when I was 16, when I got the job, they are like, here. I was like, you gave me a, this looks like a weapon. <laughs> so what do you want me to do with this? And they're like, cut boxes. Okay. Could be, could be. <laughs> hey, coming up, I want to tell everybody, if you were like me, and the one song that you know all the words to is American Pie, the longest song ever on radio, um, and I got a David as the second, but American Pie was landmark, and they're about to. We're celebrating the 50th anniversary of American Pie, and he's doing a tour. And for the first time ever, 
Don McLean is going to be in the Ryman Auditorium, May the 12th. So you can get your tickets at Ryman.com. And I want to be there. It's I'm so excited about that. And it predates you by a gazillion years, but <laughs> your daddy and I were little kids when that song came out. Well, I do love the Ryman. Anything that's ever done in the Ryman is awesome just because the acoustics in there are crazy. So, Do you know the song American Pie? I do. I do. Okay. But I would love for you to sing it for me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a little much for oh, okay. this show. You know, right. we're, we're a short show. Right, right. But I will say, Ryman.com, get your tickets. Uh, he will not be. He, just don't, don't, don't miss him. And then um, I'm bringing up something that is. I got so emotional yesterday. Um, Justin, there is a, a gentleman that we all know. His name is Hugh Prestwood. He wrote some of the greatest songs that we have in our format, but just an astounding songwriter. And the idea that he could be 79 years old and he and his sweet wife up in Long Island where they've lived for 40 years, he had an accident, which he's has rods in his back and debilitating pain. And between all of the things that have happened financially and then songwriters stop getting paid. And you might have some of the biggest hits that, uh, music has ever had, but it doesn't matter if you're not getting paid for them right. anymore. So many people, um, and with the convenience of streaming comes the convenience of not paying a songwriter. That's, that's what I've heard. I've heard, I've seen, well, I've seen a few things just trending on uh, social media is about, uh, the, like how much, how many streams have to happen on Spotify or another platform to equal $1. And it's like 600,000 streams. Oh, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Wow. People can have 13 million streams and get a hundred dollars. Exactly. Yeah. That was eye opening for sure. And so the idea that Hugh Prestwood and his wife, and they're, what they're trying to do is get back home to Texas where they do have family. And, um, uh, you can go to GoFundMe and just put the name Hugh Prestwood, H-U-G-H-P-R-E-S-T-W-O-O-D. And it is my personal cause. This is just, he didn't ask me to do this. Someone reached out and sent me the link and I read the story. And once you read the story, you just go, this is a travesty. And I shared it on my page last night and people have jumped in and been so kind. But we want to bless them. We want to bless into their life. And every little bit helps. Today is a song a lot about songwriters. But I thought we'd kick off the show with the song that he is known most for. But he's known for a lot of them. But this particular one was eight years ago. This was filmed at the Bluebird Cafe. Here's Hugh Press. Yes. Yes. Mood lighting, mood lighting. I was standing at the counter. I was waiting for the change. When I heard that old familiar music star. It was like a lighted match had been tossed into my soul. It was like a dam had broken my heart. After taking every detour, getting lost and losing track, so that even if I wanted, I could not find my way back. After driving out the memory of the way things might have been, after I'd forgotten all about us, the song remembers well. We were rolling through the Rockies, we were up above the clouds, when a station out of Jackson played that song. And it seemed to fit the moment, and the moment seemed to freeze. When we turn the music up and sing along And there was a God in heaven And the world made perfect sense We were young and were in love And we were easy to convince We were headed straight for Eden It was just around the bend And though I had forgotten all about it The song remembers well I guess something must have happened And we must have said goodbye And my heart must have been broken Though I can't recall just why The song remembers when All the miles between us 
And for all the time that's passed You would think I haven't gotten very far And I hope my hasty heart Will forgive me just this once If I stop to wonder how on earth you are But that's just a lot of water Underneath the bridge I burned And there's no use in backtracking Around corners I have turned Still I guess some things we bury Are just bound to rise again For even if the whole world has forgotten The song remembers well Even if the whole world has forgotten The song remembers well song on a song Hugh Prestwood probably one of the most gifted writers we've ever had in music not just country music but just in music and the thought that a 79 year old man and his wife uh, are struggling to make ends meet it's uh, much like all of our veterans that are out there so uh, you know what we are the most giving community in the world so you can just check out GoFundMe just a little search. Go fund me, Hugh Prestwood. And I bet since Elizabeth is watching, she would probably put the link in our comments today and uh, you'll be able to see it. Okay. I opened the box during that video. This was sent to us. Now I've got, I've got a couple of boxes that were sitting at my house this past two weeks. And so this one is brought to us by uh, my friend, Freedom Beard. Nice, nice. It's a red, white, and blue beard. That's Freedom Beard. He yeah. sent it to me, and it's a cleaning product that the professional truck drivers have created, and it is called, the worst name known to man, Bull Snot. I love it. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> but uh, Dashable is an interior detail cleaner, gotcha. and there is Waxable, a detailing wax. Is this for the uh, the truck? These are for cars and, and things like that, yeah. but detail cleaner and polish. But you can use them for other things. Right, you can right. use it on the outside of a car. You can use it for other things. Let's see what else. There is visible glass cleaner. Apparently, it's just amazing for headlights and, oh. and stuff like that. I need that. I need that for sure. Shinable tire butter and conditioner. Wow, they hooked you up. They hooked you up. I don't know if I need any tire butter, but I'm gonna try it on my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throw it in a throw it in yeah. a recipe. Shinable. Uh let's see if there's anything else that I have missed. A glass. My lord, I'm gonna share this with you. And you know what? Next week, oh, vanishable. Uh that's gotta do carpet cool. spot cleaner. Oh, that's awesome. So I wonder if it would work. Um, I had a little thing where my sunroof is in my car where a little water got in. So there's a little stain. Anyway, we're going to check out this. And next week, we'll tell you how it works. Maybe we'll do a little, little video. So we did the unboxing today. If you've got a product that you want us to unbox, I know, Bo, you are watching. And he does goat soap. And so... We're going to be unboxing that first of next week. Uh, if you've got a product you want us to take a look at or try out for you and let everybody know about, you can just uh, reach out to us, devinoday at gmail.com. I'll give you all the details. All right, tonight, Gallatin, 6.30. It is free, The Mustangs. The film is coming up, and it. if you want to know what freedom feels like, just take a look at this. The Mustang is the most American animal. Strong, fast. He was the king of the plains. The ponies that the good guy rides are Mustangs. But the reality in the West was something really different. 
by 1970, it was at the brink of annihilation. Today, wild horses exist where we do not. In fact, after a century of decline, wild horse populations have been growing and growing. Right now, there's at least 80,000 wild horses living on public land and nearly 50,000 in government storage. <laughs> we now have an icon of freedom who's become a ward of the state. And I thought that there must be an interesting story behind that. Go to the places where wild horses are to really try and find out where we came from, where we're going, and how we got to where we are today. They have all the ability in the world, but they don't have a voice. These horses, literally less than 120 days ago, never had human hands on them. His job is really going to be just to bond with some veterans and maybe show them what a cool horse and Mustang can be. If you bring your anger or you bring your bad day into it, they're going to respond to it. Mustangs can look into your soul. Thank you for giving me back my life. It's a little bit of our history still left to actually go out and see a wild horse running free. Yeah, we are a bunch of grandmas and we are out darting. We have worked to lower the birth rate of the foals. By reducing their population growth, we aim to keep them free. freedom, to know that all you have is where you stand. Mustangs are basically a living embodiment of the America that we want. And we've got to find a way to preserve it, because in doing so, we preserve ourselves and the land that we love. Man, that is going to be fantastic tonight. The Palace Theater, 6 o'clock. Thank you, Gary Holt from Equestrian Legacy Radio for letting me know 6 o'clock tonight. Thank you to Michelle Goebel for putting up the link and also for Elizabeth putting up the link in our comments today so that we can uh, help you, Prestwood. This is the uh, giving community and the sweetest hearts I have ever met are in Middle Tennessee, literally. Yeah, and uh, I agree with that one one thousand percent. Any any time there's ever been a situation uh, that uh, you know alludes toward of sort of to what's going on with um, you know Hugh, then I've everybody seen the community comes together. Yeah, sorry, I'm fumbling on my words because it is it mm -hmm. is really sad, you know, and it happens to a lot of people. It does. Well, I love the vi the veterans that were being helped by the Mustangs. I, you know, uh, right. a lot of people don't know my uh, sanctuary farm is for special needs livestock and senior horses. And a big thank you to the people who this week who started helping me with Angel Horse Farm. Uh, they made some donations. A big thank you to Richard and Debbie. They gave me a very special gift in honor of Betty White Days. Betty White's birthday is the 17th of January, the day before mine. And uh, people are giving in honor of Betty White and her entire life's work when it came to taking care of, of animals. It's January 17th. And no matter what shelter you decide to donate to or be a part of, Betty Blessings Day is January 17th. And uh, people, thank you. So Tammy Arinder from RFD uh, made a donation in, in, uh, to help me out at, at uh, Angel Horse Farm. And hopefully in the spring, we'll be open up to do some sanctuary therapy. We don't uh, work with veterans, but we do work with people with PTSD. And that's what we will be doing that in the spring. And uh, hopefully that'll be all. If we can take care of that mud situation, we're going right. to be doing it in the spring. Yeah, but it doesn't rain, <laughs> it doesn't rain too bad. Absolutely. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Well, you know what? There's been the Pied Piper of songwriters, the patron saint, the Joan of Arc for songwriters, and her name is Debbie Champion. And this week marks the 18th anniversary of 
the Commodore's Writer's Night with Debbie Champion. And we went behind the scenes. Anybody who comes to Nashville, the first place you send them is to Debbie Champion's Commodore Writer's Room. Right. And I, I was there and I got to talk to a lot of people about what Debbie does. And most of all, I got to talk to Debbie. <laughs> We're going to get it started. We've got a free fun for everybody. So I think it's starting up about 5.30 or so. You know, have a good time. This is for you. This is for the songwriters. Because you're all the ones that have built the writer's side. So, I'm going to go. We're here at Debbie Champion. And Debbie, this is a really special night here at the Commodore. We're going to get started. Andrew Goodman. It's one song ain't y'all. Gary Kavanaugh. Rich Banks and Justin Love. And some of the writers that have played your stage that have got huge notoriety, including tonight, we're going to actually see Anthony Smith. Yeah, James Otto, a lot of big hit writers with Newton, um, Tommy Barnes, Joel Shumay, Jimmy Payne, you wrote Roman Woman for Gary Beckett and Amy Gabb. Jerry Foster, Hall of Fame songwriter. Oh my gosh. And he's had like 75 award winning songs and then over 450 some cuts. I think a long time ago, uh, Stephen Farmer did a night here. But at the time, what happened? I was, you know, at the Broken Spike for like eight and a half years. Went to the Hall of Fame for about a year and a half. Then I got, got frustrated. So I took eight months off and just substitute talk. And um, watched this room, or one of this room. So after that, I called him every week. Let me try it, let me try it. And finally, he said, If you quit calling him, we'll try one. And one went to two, three, four now. Oh, Seven deep. nights a week we had it. She was the first uh, Writer's Night host that I ever played for, and that was at the Broken Spoke with Lee Raskane. And um, oh my goodness, there were other places too. Uh, I can't even remember all of them. Uh, but she's been here at the Commodore for so long, and she's helped and hosted so many songwriters that it's it's just amazing. It, it really means a, a lot to me and everybody in town. And what's, what is really funny and what's great is when someone first comes to town, she makes you pay your dues, all right? The first time I, I played and I said, hi, can I play a song? She goes, sure. You know? And the night wore on and wore on and it was it was smoky in the bar then, you know, at about 1.30 in the morning and there was like one drunk guy at the bar. I got to go on stage and sing a song. <laughs> so that's how it goes. Your writer's night is so different from the others. It, the people that have done it year after year, it's such a family affair. I don't know the answer to that. You know, I, I try to, my job here, I want, to, I want people to know each other, have that camaraderie. I remember the first time I went to a writer's night. I didn't know a soul, and I sit there for the longest time, didn't you know I was supposed to go tell the guy I was there, <laughs> check in with him. But so I want people to feel comfortable when they come in, introduce them, get them going, where they can start networking, building circles. And, you know, if they do their work and their talent, you know, keep working at it, it's just amazing what comes out of those circles. It starts with the head, yeah, and she just, she's that friendly all the time. She's walking by, that's why I'm looking at her. She's just always talking and loving on someone. Uh, you get a big hug, um, and, and, and an I love you. And um, all the way up to my 90-year-old mom comes just about every time I play, and she loves Debbie. So uh, she, when she found out about tonight, she said, I'm going too, right? You have always had room for the brand new to Nashville, first come, first serve, you show up, you get to play a song. What? And that's very different, because everybody else has to earn their spot or whatever, but you always give an open mic. Yeah, I do have an open mic right now during COVID. We used to just let you sign up. 
But during COVID, we've been, I've been uh, scheduling the open mic. So just contact me. I'll find a time where we do the audition. And it's just the end of the night. Well, I, 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 it's amazing, the new talent out there. I, isn't it though? Oh, I mean, it's a great, I saw these three girls that came in this past week from like Taylor Red. Oh man, they were awesome. Three triplets. <laughs> oh my God. And just incredible fiddle, banjo, guitar, it's just incredible. Cause he's living rent free in my head. From the time I wake up till the time I go to bed. Like a song I heard once on the internet. He's a melody that you can't ever forget. Like, with us now and when you came to Nashville was this one of the first places that you played it was you know one of those where you wait until the 10 o'clock and you hope that that somebody will you know cancel so they'll say all right you can get up there and do a song or something yeah this was one of the You're absolutely one of the guy. yeah I was open mic guy you gotta need a lot of money if you want. And, and Debbie just Oh my goodness, the, the, the opportunity she's given so many different writers from 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 brand new, new to town to to folks like like uh, Jerry that are, that's going to be up here and just tearing it up here, I think at 8.30 or something like that. Jerry Foster? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I just know it's been going on a long time and I know the songwriters are coming in and playing uh, on their own. Nobody's paying them to be here. Uh, they're strictly volunteering for what they do. And I know it's a great opportunity for them, uh, but they've been the ones keeping the magic happening, uh, keeping the music alive. And I, I thought it was just time for somebody to say thank you. Long as there's wind in my sails, and I stay afloat. See, you think you're a good songwriter, and then you come to Nashville, and then you find out how much better you can be. I, you know, people are saying, okay, we're kind of over Lower Broadway. Go to the Commodore, go listen to some songwriters. That's, you want to see Nashville, this is, this is what Nashville is. Another night has ended The crowd is shuffled out Two guys at the end of the bar Throw their last buds down The smoky haze is lifted The work lights have come on Now I'm packing up this old guitar Headed home alone I do what I do for the love of it Sure rain for the bucks but Maybe some magical wandering If I look deep enough Cause what they see three hours a night Is a tortured soul laid bare Sometimes it feels like I'm playing for tables and chairs She used to come here with me And hang on every line Since they were all about her I had a reason to rhyme but she couldn't take the lifestyle Of this gypsy on the moon You don't choose music Music chooses you I do what I do for the love of it Sure rain for the bus Maybe some magic of wandering If I look deep enough What they see three hours a night Is a tortured soul laid bare 
Sometimes it feels like I'm playing for tables and chairs Yeah, we do what we do for the love of it Sure ain't for the bucks But maybe some magical wondering If we all look deep enough When they see three hours a night Or tortured souls sleep bare Sometimes it feels like I'm playing for tables and chairs Sometimes it feels like We're playing for tables and chairs Tables and chairs Mm-mm-mm. Mark Allen Barnett incredible i call him the thunder throat and tables and chairs is kind of the unofficial official theme song of debbie champions writer's night at the commodore that was just beautiful beautiful song what a song what a song and a lot of people here have debbie champion to thank for their first time uh getting their feet wet on a stage in nashville she is like i said the patron saint and the joan of arc of all the songwriters that are out there and god god bless her well um there's somebody else who's a fantastic songwriter. We're just going to keep featuring great songs today. And uh, thank you all for paying attention to and sharing the Hugh Prestwood GoFundMe. Um, it just breaks my heart that anybody can be in their retirement years. There was a time when a songwriter could live off their earnings and their royalties because songwriters got paid, but that is all changed now with streaming. And uh, this is this is what that looks like when songwriters don't get paid and what happens in their later years when the royalties run out and you're 79 years old and disabled and you're living on a, a little tiny bit. So let's just talk about keep that conversation going. How can we help our songwriters? Also, how can we help our veterans? How can we help people who are less than us? And I'm not talking about government intervention. I'm talking about the truth. Government's not making people give. People's hearts make them give. Love does that. And it's a perfect time to play Jamie Kyle's song, Grace. It just, what a great way to end our work week. <laughs> Sometimes we let go of unfinished things It's like a silent army waiting in the wings The ghosts of war keep on taking From the innocent footsteps above ground There's thunder in the garden we never know when nor why It's a guessing game that makes the children cry We need hope enough to change We need faith enough to share Love enough for everyone, everywhere Roots of peace where once was war Flourish more Dreams enough To keep up with the pace And in the darkest Dead of night We need grace Perfectly make the mistakes But we're all on the same road With different heartaches We fall, we hurt When cut, we 
Just ignore the fact in the description of this show that I misspell Jamie's name. It's J A M. It, it just M E, not I E. I messed up on that. But you know what? Jamie Kyle, if you do a little quick Google, she also has a song that's probably one of my other favorite songs ever written. I have a few in that are in my back pocket that I go, oh, yep, that's one of them. American Pie is one of them. And Jamie has a song called Beautiful Lies. Whew. <laughs> I love uh, anything with a uh, chorus in the background or a congregation mm -hmm. of some sort. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great. Crazy over that kind of thing. That's a great way to end our week. And uh, do you have big plans for the weekend? I, I have. Well, since it's going to snow, I, I was going to go to Chattanooga, but I don't want to get blocked in Chattanooga. So yeah. <laughs> uh, it's weird. It never snows there usually because uh, my theory. Anyways, I'm not a weather person, but uh, they have the mountains. Yeah. On each side. So the snow just misses it, like it gets blocked by the mountains. So yeah. once, so we got six inches last week, they got zero. Well, then there's Mont Eagle Mountain, which does get snow. Right. And you right, got to right. go over Mont Eagle Mountain. And uh, that's why you stay that's at true. the smokehouse whenever you go there, the lodge there. That's the, that's the good place to stay if you're going to be going across there. The lodge is open, even though they had a terrible, horrific fire. Mm. They still have amazing cabins and the lodge is open. Nice. You know, um, how about yourself though? Sorry. I'm going to have, I'm, I've hopefully the snow, we're supposed to have mostly rain during the day. And during the day on Saturday, we're having our reboot boot camp with Terry Pugh. And she and I are going to be doing there. There's still three places left if you'd like to be a part of it. Uh, it's going to be just during the day uh, on Saturday. And it's just a reboot boot camp. She is an incredible life coach. And we're going to do some exercises together, including writing a song together. Oh, that's awesome. The whole group. Yeah. That's, That's so be, cool. I love Terry. She's awesome. Yeah, I've said it before. She's she's uh, one of my favorites. 
Yeah, she's just really, really, uh, yeah, she's the Earth Mother. Right, <laughs> right, exactly. She's our Earth Mother. Way to put it. Well, last week on Launch Date, which is our Wednesday show at noon, we discussed how hard it is to take a compliment. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, I'm not very good at that either. Yeah, I'm not not good at that. It's just it, craziness how that happens, and and it's just really hard. In your head about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I found something that really was a great way to end our show, and uh, it's called uh, it's from a website called Happiest, and these people drove around and literally just started giving compliments to people. And I watched how people just blossomed under these compliments. So awesome. we're going to close it with that. Be safe, everybody be kind. And remember most of all, you are loved. Have a great, great weekend. Thank you, Justin. Thank, thank you. You look very beautiful today. Oh, you just made my day. I wish I could give you a hug. <laughs> I just need to tell you how good you look right now. Appreciate you. <laughs> Can't get over your outfit. <laughs> thank you. I love your haircut. <laughs> well, that doesn't have to be. You look like a model. Hey, I appreciate that. You look so gorgeous today. Oh, Y'all are serving. Oh, my God. Thank you. I need to tell you how good your haircut looks on you. Oh, girl, oh, you don't know how much I need to hear that. Nothing like the sunrise with your coffee in the morning. Or taking a good book off the shelf. Another thing I love the most from being on my own is together with everybody else. Together on my front porch with my friends.